Our program tonight is about change, change of mind, change of heart. It seems that every generation that is ravaged by war becomes disillusioned by the contradictions that are ever present between what our government and elected officials practice and what they preach. They become ever illusioned by what seems to be those things that are explained as being politically expedient and then what is realized as extreme exploitations of the public trust. Contradictions between what is just and what is morally corrupt. Julia Ward Howe wrote the lyrics to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. During the Civil War, this became one of the most effective war propaganda pieces in our history. Before Cindy comes on, we will present a historical reenactment re with characters that underwent many contradictions of that led to change. Later in life, Julia had a change of heart and saw war as a product of a male-dominated society. She rebelled against it by urging women to join together for peace with her Mother's Day proclamation, which you will hear tonight. Much as Cindy is doing now with her international peace proclamation. Our other historical character is General Smedley Butler, a gung-ho Marine who won the Congressional Medal of Honor twice, a real hero. When he retired, he reevaluated his life and wrote the book, War is a Racket, excerpts of which you will also hear tonight. Changes of minds and changes of hearts. We hope that tonight will in some way affect a measure of change in you. We used propaganda during the First World War to make the boys accept conscription. They were made to feel ashamed if they didn't join the army. So vicious was this propaganda that even God was brought into it. With few exceptions, our clergymen joined in the clamor to kill, kill, kill the Germans. God was on our side, and it was his will that the Germans be killed. And in Germany, the good pastors called on the Germans to kill the Allies, to please the same God. This was part of the general propaganda built to make people more war conscious and more murder conscious. Beautiful ideals were painted for our boys who were sent out to die. This was to be the war to end wars. This was to be the war to make the world safe for democracy. No one told them that dollars and cents was the real reason for the war. No one told them as they were marching off that their going and dying would mean huge war profits. No one told these American soldiers 
that the bullet that might shoot them down might be made by their own brothers here? No one mentioned to them that the boat on which they might cross might be torpedoed by a submarine built with a United States patent. They were just told that this was to be a glorious adventure. Arise then, women of this day. Arise, all women who have hearts, whether our baptism be that of water or of tears. Say firmly, we will not have great questions decided by irrelevant agencies. Our husbands shall not come to us reeking with carnage for caresses and applause. Our sons shall not be taken from us to unlearn all that we have been able to teach them of charity, mercy, and patience. We, the women of one country, will be too tender of those of another country to allow our sons to be trained to injure theirs. From the bosom of the devastated earth, our voice goes up with our own. It says, disarm. Disarm! The sword of murder is not the balance of justice. War is just a racket. A racket is best described, I believe, as something that is not what it seems to the majority of people. Only a small in-group knows what's happening. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few and at the expense of the masses. I have spent 33 years and four months in active military service as a member of this country's most agile fighting force, the Marine Corps. I have held all of the commission ranks, from second lieutenant to major general. And during this period, I have spent most of my time as a high-class muscle man for big business for Wall Street and for the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer, a gangster for capitalism. Oh, I helped make Mexico a safe place for American banking interests. And I helped Haiti and Cuba be a decent place for the National City Bank boys to collect revenues in, I helped in the rape of half a dozen Central American republics for the benefit of Wall Street. And in China, I helped see to it that Standard Oil went its way unmolested. War is a racket. Few profit, the many pay. So I say, to hell with war. Blood does not wipe out dishonor, nor violence indicate possession. As men have often forsaken the plow and the anvil at the summons of war, let women now leave all that may be left of home for a great and earnest day of counsel. 
let them meet first as women to bewail and commemorate the dead. Let them solemnly take counsel with each other as to the means whereby the great human family can live in peace, each bearing after his own time the sacred impress not of Caesar, but of God. In the name of womanhood and humanity, I earnestly ask that a general congress of women without limit of nationality may be appointed and held to promote the alliance of the different nationalities, the amicable settlement of international differences, the great and general interests of peace. Now, you mothers particularly, there's only one way that you can resist this war hysteria, this beating of tom-toms, and that is by asserting the love you bear for your boys. When you hear some well-worded, well-delivered war speech, just remember that it is only sounds, and no amount of sounds can make up to you for the loss of your boy. After you hear one of those speeches and your blood is hot and you want to bite someone like Hitler, go upstairs to where your boy is asleep and look at him. Put your hand on that spot behind his neck, that spot you used to love to kiss when he was a baby. And rub it a little, he won't wake up, he'll know it's you. Look at his strong, fine body, because they only take the best boys for war. Look at this splendid young creature who is a part of yourself. Close your eyes for a moment, and we'll tell you what can happen. 